Hello, thank you for coming to the YAPSI, well, to the Pearl Conference. Uh, thank you to, to be part of this community, wonderful community. Uh, I'm Diego, I'm part of Barcelona PM. And, yeah, uh, I, I can try, yeah, okay. So, I'm Diego, I'm, I'm part of Barcelona PM, and of course, I love Pearl. And I and my computer support the red herd, so yeah. My terminal also does. Um, and also, and of course, I love the community. And I I've been around for for a long time. So I I I, I also love the IRC, and I'm kind of in love and well, love and hate like everything with with bots. I'm. I got really used to use bots, so for me it's kind of yeah, it's, a, it's a mix between a command for for the chat and a demon for the chat mostly. But yeah, a command for the chat. Keep it that in mind. So a few time ago, uh, I started a company, and well, you know, starting a company is hard. Uh, I was like the the only worker doing it. I was working alone at home for the first three months or something like that. Um, and when when this when these things starting to come up and I starting to believe that this will happen, I saw that I will have a lot of parts, like a lot of parts. Because what we mostly do is we scrape a lot, we make sense of this uh, massive amount of data. So, well, what one, th one thing I, I was trying to achieve at that moment was to automate as much as we can. So we started using like a lot of tools. We started with Puppet. Sometime later, we changed for Ansible. And then, well, we used all of these things and probably much more. And we were automating everything uh, as long as we were going on, on the development of the thing, of the beast. And by the time when the first employees started to work with me, everything was automated. Well, everything was automatic, yeah. It was. The problem was you need to have all set up at your box, like all those tools, like a specific version of all those tools. And then you need to know how to use those tools. I mean, not writing the automation because that was already done, but you need to know how to use our automation. So there was a lot of options. All of those are options. So, to deploy some application, you need to say, okay, I want to deploy in this environment, this application from this branch. And, well, that's hard. So, at the end, what we had was a, a VM we, where, where we had a screen with history where we were picking up all the stuff and repeating all the time. But this, this was not really useful when people are starting to work with you. And also there were some security implications. This was how we used to deploy workers on some boxes. At that time we had really, I know, no more than 50 workers. Now we have a lot. So this was a hard times. And well, how, how we fix this problem? At first, what we, what, what I was thinking about was, okay, I can create another CLI, so I can wrap everything on that, so I can just have help and make it work. Of course, I can also use a make file and a lot of solutions, but at the end, well, this was around five years ago, six, uh, there was a lot of uh, talking about this thing that then became like the chat ops and this thing. And I know, being someone who came from the IRC, for me was a really natural move to, to start thinking about this. So we start talking about this. 
we, we, we talk a lot about this, like a lot, a lot, a lot, because I was not doing it. We were too busy working on our system that I never sat down to uh, fix this problem. Uh, well, so we talk about a bot that will be always be online. Uh, it can deploy all our software. Probably it can do some operations. And well, it, be, it will be nice if it can also monitor and alert us of things. But well, we keep chatting. So yes, we need a bot. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that time, well, we, we decided to use uh, Shaver. Why we decided to use Shaver? Because there was that service from Google that at that time was called SheTalk. Now I don't know how they talk anymore, how they call it anymore, but they changed the name all the time. And there has push notification for free. That was great for us. <coughs> and we keep chatting about it. And and yeah, every, every day we, we talk about this. We had new ideas for the bot. So one, one thing that was clear, what we need a pluggable bot. Yeah, we need to be, it, it should be easy to add things. So there was a rainy Sunday. We don't have that many in Barcelona. Probably if I was living here, the bot was done much, much earlier, but no. And like, I, I got up early. My partner was just, I don't know, she was busy. So I sat down. I do what I most, like I always do when I start things, that is going to Sipan and start searching for keywords that came to my mind. And I, I, I of course, I got a lot, a, a ton sheet of, modules to solve my problem. So the first one was completely discarded because it didn't support Java. The other two did. I tried to use it. It, it was like too big for me. And after like 25 minutes of trying, I decided, well, I can do it myself. Why not? So I throw some code into a file, like you always do. But was the, the most important bit was I need a connection to uh, XMPP. So I copy and paste from Zipan. I need some things. I add some place for plugins. Now I will see. And of course, to connect events from one thing to the other. So uh, loading up plugins was just loading up Perl modules, uh, initialize it, and place it on, a, on, a, on an array. So OK. And the important part here was every time I get an, e an event from XMPP, I need to dispatch it to all the plugins that was registered. So this, this line, this is the important line of the bot. Then I were up all the events that were important for me at the moment. Probably message is the only one. And then I, and I, and add, I add one more artificial event that was a tick. So the bot will tick every second to let plugins do whatever they want on every second. Yep. So now I have my shiny new bot that does nothing. But yeah, it worked. So I follow on and I, add, I, I tested the first plugin. The first plugin will send a message to my phone every time it starts. And on the other events, it will just print on the screen. So yeah, now I have a, a baby bot that can print things on my screen. Well, 
it was time to do something for real. And my first thing to do for real was to deploy uh, my stuff. We had a lot of stuff to deploy, but to, I, I started with applications. So what I wanted to do is the about to understand this and to, uh, well, to extract things and later it will only, it, it will just need to um, shell things out, right? It, it, it needs to call whatever it needs to call in the command line. So again, I throw some code in and I, and what I, and I did what the bot need to do, and that is pass the message. Of course, this is really easy to read. Then get some defaults and then deploy. Well, no. Okay, deploy. What do I, I need to do is, okay, I need to figure out which things I had to run in the command line. And when I got all the commands I have to run, then I will run the commands. But yeah. After this complete, well, the first version was just say, I'm done. Yeah, of course, this can fail. This was fixed much, much later, but for, for time, this worked. And I, I had a, a role, so, I, so it can run commands asynchronously. So, well, this worked pretty well. On the night of that Sunday, I had all this working. I set it up in a virtual machine, in the same virtual machine we had on the, with the screen with all the commands. And guess what? Yeah, the next Monday we start using it in production, of course. Uh, well, after that, of course, we get a lot of uh, different plugins for deploying all our stuff. And after that, we, well, I started working on the plugin for monitoring. Well, doesn't expect nothing fancy from here. This is what we use for, well, we use for a very long time, not anymore, but we use for a very long time for monitoring our applications. And when I say many, a long time, it, it, I think we, we was using this until one month ago. And the only thing it did was use the configuration, so it will HTTP get anything and it will check if it contains something or it will check if it exists. And that is all it did. And this is something that saved us a lot of time. And yeah, we, we were using this with a few modifications, very, very few modifications for a long time until, well, something happened. We start using Slack. Yeah. So, yeah, Slack also has push notification for free. So, yeah, um, well, I don't know. I wasn't that into it, but yeah, I sat down. I don't remember if, if it was raining or not, but I sat down and I had support for Slack. I didn't remove support for XMPP. I don't know why, but I didn't. So now we can talk with it both sides. Uh, and yeah, I, I added I searched on CPAN, another library to do uh, uh, real-time connection with Slack uh, in, the, in an event form. So I need the Slack. But then I realized this, at this point, it, I realized it wasn't that easy. What was the problem? The problem is when you use XMPP, the way I was using it, that it was uh, intentionally not implementing groups. Uh, every time the bot received a message, it was a message for him. So it was really easy. But now, no, I need to address that. And also there is another problem. All the plugins and everything was made for XMPP. So what I did was I wrapped the message from Slack into another class, so I can 
behave like an X XMPP message. And is this, no, nothing interesting here. It can make all the plugins believe that they are talking with whatever they want to talk. And they can answer when it's addressed. And we need to know when he's addressed. So, well, at this point I, I sat down to fix this problem and what I done was to write like another layer on top of the layer of the role to do plugins because it was natural. So what I did was, okay, every time I, I need to, I, I want to respond to a command, I will consume this role. And this role, what we'll do is, we'll attend for all messages, it will tokenize, it will check if uh, the message is for the bot or not. And if it, if it does, it will get the first token and it will check if, if my plugin has that as a method. So uh, as a CMD uh, method, like here, right? So, well, this is called for checking if the message is for the bot. So now we, we had this code and if I were rewriting this, which I didn't, we still use this, well, but nasty, nastier, uh, it, it, will, it will be something like this, using this new role, and also will work with both protocols. Well, not much better, but a little bit better. But then I saw a problem. What happens if I have a subcommand? because this help is not an application. So if I deploy help, I don't want to, de to, to deploy anything. I want help on deploy. So, well, <laughs> this can be fixed. So I add subcommands. Subcommands is just new method on the role, and it will redispatch to the second one. Uh, so, but to use this, you need to say, okay, this is just a bridge, or, to other commands. But this is not something completely true because in this case, I need applications plus help. So if I have help on, on the bottom uh, that will get the help and all the rest will go to the default method if it exists and the one that the user wants doesn't exist. So fixed. <clears throat> we, we also added some more plugins. I, we added like the Slack, the Slack plugin, and the Slack plugin was something different than the rest because it wasn't facing the user. It was so, the, this plugin was only made to be used by other plugins. I don't know if you remember from the beginning the the dispatcher. The dispatcher doesn't know from where the message came, so you can dispatch whatever you want, whichever method you want and it will call every uh, single plugin looking for that uh, method. So yeah, this is how you use it. And well, from now on all plugins can announce things on any channel in Slack. That was really important to fix or uh, monitoring plugin that was only uh, alerting on shower to me, only to me. So then, well, we are heavy users of Rescue. And well, I, I had a lot of commands to handle things that goes wrong in Rescue. So, well, I added another plugin to manage all this stuff and to retry things and to check things, okay. Then, well, Sometimes we need to buy more servers, but where we use, where we buy servers, there is not always a server we want in the data centers that we want. So, well, we have a plugin that will, that when we ask, will be monitoring uh, our provider and will tell us and will give us a URL to buy server, the, the amount of servers we ask every time. And also will tell us when we have to pay for our servers, because now we have too many and the last two outages was because I forgot to pay. So, yeah, it was a good, good, good investment. 
Uh, well, when I did this, uh, I needed something I saw in the beginning on, on this huge framework to do bots, that's the brain. So I add this role so we can have JSON configuration on every plugin. And then, what? well, at this point, uh, another member came to the team and he's serious about monitoring, he knows how, what he does. So now we use Sensu, we have an API for monitoring, we, we keep everything there. So what we did was we, we were receiving a lot of uh, alerting from the system because it's not too intelligent. If something goes wrong, it will tell you. If something goes wrong again, the same thing, it will tell you. So we did this plugin, and this plugin, what it does is uh, ask for failures to the Sensu API every second, or every 30 seconds, something like that. And each time it sees something new, it remembers what happened the last time, and when it sees something new, it will tell us, and it knows how to scale. And then, well, what this was working, this was kind of two weeks ago, we were having a lot of problems with some uh, MongoDB clusters and replica sets. Uh, it, it, was fel uh, it was delaying, I don't know if you know, but well, the, the replicas was, a lot of time was behind the, the, the primary nodes, and well, yeah, every time something breaks there, we had to stop a lot of workers for five hours and resynchronize everything, and it was a pain. So we, what we were doing manually was every time the bot says, this is going behind, we manually stop some uh, workers using the rescue plugin, and yep, and it worked. It, it, it fixed really easy. So what we did was we added, uh, and you know, uh, let me see, uh, another mechanism so the monetarization can fix things. So it can redispatch messages to the other plugins. But the problem was the other plugins was expecting messages, like Slack messages or Java messages. So I introduced a new message that is a loop message, that is kind of message, you, you can just create a message and dispatch it so other plugins can get a message and do what they need to do. And well, this was almost all, but at some point a member of my team said, oh, you know, I don't want to go out of my terminal. I really don't, it, it breaks my peace. So well, I say, why not? We can use the bot from the CLI. So what, I, what we did was, well, we had support for HTTP, uh, almost the same way for Slack. We, uh, we initialize a route, uh, like a default route, we we'll get everything, we we'll catch all, and well, it will create an HTTP message that when it destroys, it will send all the output that got the message as replies to the browser, and yes, it worked. So now I, we can deploy like this. Yeah! Also, we can deploy like this, because we added a, a command that we can use. But what, what was really great about this is like that we can deploy like this. And here, plus means parallel, and slash means serial. So in this case, it will deploy API and workers in parallel, and after that, it will deploy the app. So, yeah. thank you.